Hey and welcome to another quick tutorial on NFTX. My name is Jay Avery and I'm part of the core team and today I wanted to showcase the Create Vault flow which has been now updated. So there's uh, two ways of getting to it. You can go to the nftx.io site and click on Create and here there is a button telling you to go over to the new flow wizard or if you're starting on NFTX Yield um, you can go to the Pools tab and then click on New Pool. So both ways, if we click on Try This Now, it opens up in a new window, uh, or if we click through here onto New Pool, you can see we're open the same thing. So when you start, you'll be connected, and it will show you all of the ERC721s uh, or the 1155s that you have in your wallet. You just choose one of your... Uh, items that you want to create a vault for. There is already a Space Poggers vault, but we're going to use that as an example. It immediately populates the uh, the icon and the collection name, the collection address, and the token standard. When we say next, if there is an existing vault for that collection, it does warn you to say, hey, there's already a vault. Do you want to use that one instead? Uh, for this case, we'll say proceed anyway. Now we can pick a vault name. This can be anything that you want. It can be my vault, but you probably want to give it a name that is similar. So maybe like Space Poggers Vault or just Space Poggers is fine. And then with the symbol, we want to keep our symbol to six characters. Uh, try use single. So instead of Poggers, you would use Pogger. Um, and then we can upload an icon. So previously you had to go and uh, choose an icon, uh, but now you can drop one in there now. Um, the icon should be 256 by 256, so kind of like a square, uh, and then a transparent PNG is preferred as well. Uh, you can set custom parameters if you want to, which allows you to change the different vault features like cells, buys, random buys, random redeems, uh, random swaps, uh, and swaps. And you can also configure your fees now as well. You have the default fee. We also have the blue chip fee, which are fees that we recommend for any collections that have a buy price of over five ETH. Uh, things like Punk, Space C, uh, Glyphs would have these smaller fees. Or alternatively, you can switch to custom and you can make up your own fees if you want. Uh, most of the time, the default fees will work perfectly for everyone. Uh, we also have the eligibilities as well. So by default, there are no eligibilities. It will be every NFT available on that collection. Sometimes you might want to only have a certain number of NFTs from the collection available. Uh, this is where you would put in your collection list of IDs that you want to allow. Um, the longer the list, the more expensive it is to write it. Uh, so if you have a consecutive list, you may want to use the range tool. Where you say, look, I want to include, just say you wanted the first 1,000 token IDs in there and your ID started with zero. You could do 0 to 999, and that would pull just the first 1,000 tokens in. Uh, but again, most people don't have any eligibilities set. Uh, most people go with the default fees, and most people have the all the features enabled, which means we don't need any custom parameters. If we hit Next, we'll come across, and this is where we want to add the NFTs in. Uh, this will load the ones that you have in your wallet. You can click on show more and it will load more of them. Um, we are just going to say uh, select, let's just select five and then we will continue. Um, it does warn you here as well at this point is that we do recommend that you put at least 10 items to bootstrap a vault. Um, anything less than that and the buy and sell price, there's too much spread between them. And there's also too much of an impact when someone buys an NFT from the vault. Like the price will jump quite a bit when there is like shallow like liquidity. But we'll go through here as an example. When I hit next, we get onto our uh, adding of the liquidity. So here we can see that we're pulling through the floor price, the current floor price from GEM, which is an aggregator tool to pull in all of the buy prices from or all of the sell prices from all of the marketplaces. Uh, so this gives you an idea about what you might want to set your starting price at. Now here, if we set this at 0 0.0015, um, we can see by setting our price here with this much liquidity in there, um, we're going to have a pretty good visibility on GEM, so we're going to appear about 7th in GEM. 
Um, so seventh on the list in gem, which isn't too bad. And we can see the buy price here, what the sell price will be, what the swap price, and then the delta, which is the difference between the buy and the sell price. Now here we see we strongly recommend adding more NFTs as liquidity. So if you want to, this is why I only added a few, we can come in and add and remove. Now we're gonna come back to this and I'm gonna say select all this time. So I'm dropping all 27 in. And we go next. Now that they're all set, uh, set in there, we're just gonna go 0, 0. Point, uh, we'll go 0.17 um, as our starting price. Um, here we can see that based on the fees, um, we're going to be costing 0 0.0019 per NFT. You can see we're going to be sixth on GEM. Um, this is the cheapest price on GEM and the chance of visibility through GEM is excellent. Uh, if you want to change your position split, so by default, 80% of the fees go to liquidity providers and 20% of the fees go to inventory providers. So we tend to set the split up at 80-20. You can use the slider to change that and you can see as we put more inventory in and less liquidity in that our pool depth uh, gauge here is reducing and so is the ETH required to put in to create that liquidity pool. We can also see that our position on GEM as we go down all of a sudden it starts impacting now we're up to 8th, now we're at 17th now we're over 100 and if you put too little liquidity in there's insufficient liquidity for someone to be able to buy an nft from the pool so the more liquidity the better we do recommend an 80 20 split but this gives you a really good idea about how much eth is required to pair against the nfts that you're putting in um, and then you can see your overall cost uh, on the right hand side here as well you can see what our buy and sell swap prices are going to be as we update those those will update as well to give you an idea about how people are going to be experiencing your vault once it gets published so once you are happy with everything you can just click on create that will ask us to approve poga so approve the nft um, once we've approved the nft it gives the nftx contracts access to all of the nfts from that collection within your wallet because we need we're moving them into the vault um, I won't do this now because it will go ahead and create a new vault, which we don't want to do because we have a Pogger vault already. Uh, so I'm going to say reject on this. But yes, once you've approved the Pogger, it will then ask you to approve the create vault and then it will skip through and do all of these uh, tasks. And at the end, you will end up with a brand new vault um, at the prices that you have set. So I hope that the process of adding uh, ETH and liquidity and inventory are a little more clearer. Uh, things like having the gem price in there as well and seeing where you're gonna position on gem, I think is a really good indication as to how, like where you're going to uh, appear on those pages and how much activity that you might get uh, on your vault through aggregators as opposed to just through the NFTX app itself. Any feedback that you might have, please stop by the Discord or hit us up on Twitter and we look forward to seeing what you create next.